I don't know if you can see, but there's Mama Red Fox right there. She's keeping a close watch on me. But it just goes to show you, the forecast was from rain, wind, clouds. You still gotta get up and get out there because you never know what you're gonna see. And this mom has got two pups and she's watching them. Well, I'm glad I ran into that fox family when I did because uh, now it's torrentially raining. Yeah, the only thing could have been better about that fox encounter would be if it was an arctic fox. But, you know, photographer's never happy. But I think it could be... I just chimped some of the photos. Bad Sparky. I think there could be one of my favorites of the trip so far. Yeah, kind of a mammal in the landscape photo. I'll put it in the video here. Now what to do, my Zodiac trip I'm sure will be canceled, which is a bummer. Yeah, I don't know. I oh, got my Arctic Fox. Edge of this tundra pond, I spotted some Pacific loons in the back corner, and they can be very curious critters. Sure enough, got to the edge uh, here, and they started swimming towards me. You know, they had to check out this strange thing, and I was using those red leafed bushes as kind of a foreground to get some foreground color because it's a gray day. And sure enough, it came in, got a few shots. Oh. Yeah, I got slow motion of them standing up and flapping and got uh, some photos when they extend their neck and yawn or something. I don't know, they stretch their bill, kind of fun. Here's my favorite tundra shrub. Yeah, it's a little rhododendron, tiny little rhododendron, but always blooming here in mid-June. Common sight on the tundra are these so-called flag spruce. They're black spruce 
and the snow in the winter covers those bottom few branches, protects them, they're able to grow and survive. And then the wind blowing snow and ice just scours the middle part of the trunk free of branches. And then you have that little tuft, the quote unquote flag at the top of the spruce. And here's what I call a Jaeger hummock. It's just a high dry mound surrounded by low wet tundra. And this is where the Jaegers will land and rest. And, and they also place their nests on these mounds. And on this particular day, I must have been very close to a Jaeger nest because check out what happened next. <laughs> Okay, now I'm dang close and I'm just trying to get out of here. It almost hit me that time. If you've ever wondered where those rusty blackbirds nest as they pass through your place during migration, it's up here on the edge of the wet tundra near these boggy pools. I occasionally stumble upon nests out in the tundra and I always take a quick photo and move on because when the temps are in the 40s and 30s, they, those eggs should not be left uncovered for very long. Oh, my patch and my rubber boots is working. There's a wimbrel on a mound, on a hummock, dry hummock out here. Let's see if it lets me get anywhere close. Time for dinner. Wash down. This video is not sponsored by any of those products. That was a long walk. A couple hours in the tundra. Found uh, a nest. I think it was leaf sandpiper or semi-palmated sandpiper. Very small. Of course, the, I'm sure I was within feet of that parasitic Jaeger nest. American golden plover. How exciting is that? And then it just vanished on me. Two wimbrels, pretty cool. Black pole warbler, also heard red poles and Lincoln sparrow, ravens and herring gulls. And this is called wet tundra. It used to be Smith's long spurs that nested in this stuff, but they seem to have uh, abandoned the Churchill area. I'm sure they are just somewhere else. I'm taking a time lapse of the icebergs. I just spent 45 minutes with a pair of arctic hares that just ignored me. I think it was a male following around a female, but uh, yeah, I just had some chance, some great chances for some awesome photos. Not many places where you can drive up to the edge of Hudson Bay. Well, a cold and blustery morning out here on the coast road in Churchill, and there are unbelievable. Just a massive flock of scoters out there on Hudson Bay between the ice and the shore. And I estimated about 1,600. 
It was mostly black scoters and surf scoters, but there were some eiders mixed in as well as some white wing scoters. What a sight, icebergs and thousands of ducks. They've just been all concentrated into this thin area of open water. But I'm also keeping an eye out. This is the area where there was a polar bear seen yesterday. Uh, I got my car, car doors open, my eyes open. And yeah, they like to stay by the coast this time of year. A little cooler than inland and most of them are out on the sea ice still hunting seals. Got my polar bear. Oh wait. Guess not. Churchill is only a town of about 800 folks. And there's the northern store where you get about everything. And there's only about 60 miles of roads that you can access. Of course, you can only get to Churchill by plane or train. Rough road. This is where I saw a hoary red pole five years ago. This is what do you love to see on your rental vehicle. And the parking brake is stuck, or the light is stuck on. I think the parking brake's off. Hard to tell. Oh boy, this can't be good. Listen to the sound coming from underneath the truck. I'm really hoping it's just a rock stuck in either the wheels, brakes. Sounds like Godzilla's taking a skyscraper and twisting it to heck. How's oh, that for an analogy? Uh, you might be wondering why I'm laying on my back. I've been laying on my front for quite a while because I just got my best photos and video ever of Hudsonian Godwin and American Golden Plover. Woot woot. You know, in that position with your neck kind of cocked up, <sighs> just gotta stretch it out and relax for a little bit. What a great experience out here on the wet tundra. They're both wet tundra species. Hudsonian godwit, the well-named Hudsonian godwit. <laughs> wow, a little tundra pool here on the wet prairie. And uh, right over there. And they both flew in. I'm gonna probably head out further onto the tundra because who knows what else we'll find. First, maybe a nap. It's a problem when the sun goes down at 10 and comes up at four. But yeah, I might go walk further out on the wet tundra, see what else we could find because I'm guessing there's a lot more out here.
Here's the Ithaca. I don't know if you can see it. That's uh, a shipwreck, a Greek ship from a long time ago. Low tide, you can actually walk out to that thing. They have your own little private infinity pool here in the tundra. Unfortunately, the water's about 28 degrees. <laughs> okay, 32. My happy place, the Arctic tundra. Now let's find a Smith's Longsburg. Twin Lakes Road is absolutely best for willow ptarmigan and uh, every time I see them I just like to stop and watch and see what their antics might be today. Here's a really drab, very camouflaged female and uh, yeah, this male was not letting her very far out of his sight. You gotta love their call too. It's one of the most distinctive and I'd say humorous calls in the bird world. But the females must be impressed. I had to will this Hudsonian Godwit up into this little stunted tamarack. It was on the ground and uh, I thought, oh, that'd be an awesome photo. And what do you know? Churchill is the place for shorebirds and trees. Gotta love it. Also found some roadside short-billed dowitchers. Always fun to watch them with their sewing machine feeding technique. Identification is pretty easy this time of year since long-billed dowagers don't nest around here. They nest much further north. the geese here. Not the greater Canada goose like we get up in Minnesota. So these guys are the intermediate smaller variety kind of in between cackling and greater. I can see you. Minutes later I found this red fox who had his lunch with him. Yeah I'm sure baby Canada geese feed a lot of red fox this time of year.
Goose Creek Road goes through some black spruce bog habitats, and it's it's fun seeing these birds that only that we only see either in winter or in migration see them on their nesting grounds singing and performing courtship displays. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, I am officially pretty sick of turkey, cheese, some kind of weird mayo-mustard combo. Highly recommend this hotel. They also offer Zodiac tours so you can get up close and personal with the blue Sure. Okay, let's go. And they're also the only whale that can manipulate the uh, shape of their lips. Oh. Um, and a lot of the time they do that, like, um, they can manipulate the shape of their lips and then change the air in their, through their sinuses and their mouth, and then that directs the other things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> One of the things we learned from our guide, James, was that belugas can actually turn their heads. They do not have fused vertebrae in their neck, quote unquote, and that's really rare among whales and seals and dolphins. They have these, quote unquote, melons on the top of their head, these kind of bumps, and they can change size, probably mainly used to create their myriad of sounds they make. Sailors used to call them the sea canaries, and they possibly use them for echolocation, kind of a sonar thing. <laughs> They can dive to almost a half mile, or over a half mile, 2,600 feet plus. Crazy. Parasitic Jaeger. Top mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Are you no, any long tail? 
No, not yet. No. Are you sure? No, I, I heard that. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what I genuinely think helps bring him in, but I never do it in front of clients? He's singing. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're welcome to sing, but. That's why they dive bomb in your head. At the very end of our tour, we had a surprise sighting of a harlequin duck. Quite a rare bird in Hudson Bay. Big thanks to our knowledgeable guide James of Sea North Tours for this absolutely fantastic zodiac tour of the Churchill River and Hudson Bay. But I soon got back to reality and filled up my truck. $192. That sets a new record for me. <laughs> but that was in Canadian dollars. I spend a lot of time out at Cape Mary just because it's such a memorable place. And I think I had a snowy owl, actually. I'm going to zoom in on it for you, but <laughs> hard to tell, but uh, I'm counting it. On my last morning, I decided to just sit and enjoy the show out at Cape Mary. Oh, Red-throated loons are the star of the show this morning. Here comes one right by us. That was a red-breasted merganser. The red throated loons are zipping by at eye level here. I'm trying to get some shots in slow motion video. It's 35 degrees and there's some steam coming off the river. It's pretty cool. With the Canon R5, it just locks on, I mean, almost always to these birds. It's just magic. And the morning is magic. Let's enjoy some of the magic of Cape Mary on a beautiful day. You know, just belugas, dozens, I'd say hundreds of belugas, ducks and loons and Jaegers flying past the point up and down the river. Why? Why are there so many critters around here? Oh yeah, can't forget the seals. Well, it all kind of boils down to a couple things. The ice goes out on the river before Hudson Bay. And so you got open water, and with that open water, you got access to fish. And one fish in particular, the capelin. And here they are, tr desperately trying to escape a beluga whale as it comes through. Belugas thrive on capelin. They are little fish, maybe four to six inches long, a member of the smelt family. Very edible, high in omega-3 oils. And this is kind of the lifeblood of the Churchill River at the mouth of Hudson Bay. Definitely required dietary element for the belugas. There are hazards on the river. Watch this red-throated loon. Oh, oh yeah, beluga. Almost blew that red-throated loon out of the air. You'd think beluga watching wouldn't be that interesting. I mean, they're underwater 90% of the time. But I saw some cool behaviors, including spy hopping, like this, where they just kind of stick their heads straight up out of the water. Also saw a tail fluke. Another fun thing one of the local guys taught me was the really dark gray belugas are the, the young. It can take up to six years before they turn white. Let's just sit back and enjoy some of the sights and sounds of Cape Mary.
The difference between low tide and high tide at Churchill can sometimes be up to 13 feet, and it happens fast. And so in the rock crevices, sometimes the capelin get caught in these little pools. And of course, that's a boon for gulls and and other birds that eat the, the capelin. But yeah, kind of sad. Well, I think that kind of wraps up our trip. Goodbye to Hudson Bay. Fantastic trip. Got a bunch of stuff on my bucket list of photos, so that was very exciting. And we had rain, wind, cold temps, interspersed with some really cool light. Mosquitoes only one day. One day with rough mosquitoes, but that was it. And that's because it's only 40 some degrees. The locals say it's the rule of nines. If it's nine degrees Celsius or colder, and if the winds are nine knots or stronger, you're not gonna have any mosquito issues. Yeah, we had both those things. <laughs> Hate to leave, we'll be back. Mm -hmm.